Let's get to work right now. NFC wild card starting it all off. 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, January 14th. We have the Seattle Seahawks, 9-8, and 4-4 four and four on the road at the San Francisco 49ers, 13-4, 8-1 and one at home. We're at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, and rain. Rain in the forecast, 56 Fahrenheit, rain, 12-mile-per-hour winds. I was a little surprised of this total being at the number it is. And maybe, maybe I should have then just talked it out, but... We've seen these teams play each other twice this year. Both games comfortably went to the under. And I just don't see why this would be any different. I was staring at it all day, and it moved from 42.5 back up to 43 at my book while I was staring at it, which is not a good feeling if you're getting closer towards kickoff. But here I was like, you know what, I'm going to take the under 43. So uh, the spread opened up at Pinnacle plus 10 minus 104. Uh, it's now plus 10 minus 119. So uh, this has moved to nine and a half. This was at 10 and a half. This was at 10 and a half. It was juiced, but it was at 10 and a half. But we now are at nine and a half. From a total perspective, opened up at 43 and a half, and it's now at 43. It didn't move at Pinnacle, but it did move at other books. So uh, Archie Bunker, welcome. Uh, now a member of Weeby Pub. And there's a schnizzle in the house. We got DT. In the house, uh, Sky Dragon says, Is Jimmy scared of Pete Seahawks? I'm not scared, but we'll get into a, uh, some issues I have in the game here shortly. Cash wise, right now we have 15,918 tickets in, and the sharper action is on the Seahawks 37% of the tickets, 50% of the cash. That's been fluctuating, but the bigger bets have been on the Seahawks the whole time. And I was expecting it to move to nine and a half. 35% of the tickets and 89% of the cash is on the under. Seattle comes in off its second straight win to get in the playoffs. An underwhelming 1916 overtime victory at home against the undermanned Rams. The Seahawks offense did not look good. One of 11 on third down, 0 and 4 in the red zone in a game they had to win. Geno Smith was 19 to 31 for 213 yards, a touchdown, two picks. Kenny Lockett caught four for 54 and a touchdown. Kenneth Walker, he's run for 100 plus yards now in three straight games. He went for 114 yards on 29 carries, also caught a 10 yard pass. Since week 14, the Seahawks are two and three and are 25th in EPA per play on offense. It's not good, they don't look good. Now, Smith did lead the NFL in completion percentage. The defense was strong, holding the Rams to just 269 yards. They finished with five sacks. Quandre Diggs had an interception. Tariq Woolen, the rookie cornerback out of UTSA, uh, has been st strong this season. I thought their secondary was going to be vulnerable this year, but he's been very good. He's great as a top 30 corner by Pro Football Focus this year. But Seattle's 27th in third down defense. 24th in red zone defense, and I don't think they can hang with the 49ers. The Niners come in off their 10th straight win, 38-13 at home over the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Brock Purdy, 15-20 for 178 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, mm -hmm. multiple TD passes in six straight games. Second rookie quarterback in NFL history with at least six straight games with multiple TD passes. <clears throat> the Niners have scored at least 33 points in five of six games since he replaced Jimmy G. But... The Seahawks are the only team over 500 that he played as a starter. And they were the only unit to slow him down. Now they're going to see him again. IU caught four for 59. Kittle caught four for 29, two touchdowns. McCaffrey ran 10 times for 45 yards, caught three for 34. He scored a touchdown in six straight games. He hasn't played in the playoffs since his rookie season 2017. Elijah Mitchell returned from his second MCL sprain of the season with five carries for 55 yards, two touchdowns. He's a huge piece to the puzzle for the 49ers. Uh, they were 6 of 13 on third down and 4 of 6 in the red zone. They're 6th in points, 4. They're 5th in yards this season. They are 17th in red zone percentage. And, and I, you know, with Purdy back there and Jimmy G before him, I mean, that's just what you're going to get, you know. The defense was strong again. The secondary only seems vulnerable at times to, to some big plays. A.J. Green had a 77-yarder against them. That's the sixth pass play of at least 50 yards a season allowed by San Francisco. That's tied with Green Bay for the most in the NFL. And that's one more than the Niners allowed in the last two years combined. So there's some problems there. Uh, they held the Cardinals to 255 total yards in just one trip to the red zone. 
I still believe this is the best defense in the NFL. Uh, the stats still portray that. They're first in yards, first in points allowed, first in interceptions, number one defense in EPA per play. Uh, Bosa was an absolute monster this year, 18 and a half sacks, 19 tackles for a loss. Uh, both games went under, as I said, in the regular season. And the 49ers run the ball on 48.1% of their snaps, which is the seventh highest in the league. And the Seattle D ranks 26th in yards per rush attempt. I think this sets up for the 49ers to win. The spread is very big. I don't know if I want to take the Niners here. The spread is very big, but I do want the under, and I bet it under 43. Let's hand the floor over. <clears throat> are Andy Molitor. Take it away, NFC Wildcard, Seattle, San Francisco. Yeah, I, I do think some of the action that's coming on the total is just um, maybe the matchup. I, I feel like the, it's a correlation between Niners beat the tar out of them and the over. Like it, picture, picture what we saw last night in college football where one team, even when they were trying to slow the game down, and just get it over with, and we're running the ball, they were still getting like eight yards a carry. I, I worry that it's just going to be that, where, you know, the, the biggest thing that we're seeing all over Twitter and in the media and the narratives is these young quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks, first-time quarterbacks in the playoffs. Like, how do you mitigate that? You just use three running backs. You run the piss out of the ball, and, it's, again, if you pull it up the last six weeks, this is the bottom, the 32nd team in the NFL against the run in EPA per play in Seattle. So <laughs> Elijah's back. You have Debo that's – I don't know how many times I'd give him the ball. I'd, I'd try to kind of milk that out and not get him banged up right away again. But you have McCaffrey as well. If you can split carries and you don't have to put 15, 20 carries on his, you know, on his body at this point early in the playoffs, save him for later, it just – it just feels like the uh, the Niners kind of smash in this spot. It is too many points. I'm not I'm not a fan of laying over a touchdown in most spots in the playoffs. It's really tough for me, especially a divisional foe like this. They've played each other twice. There's some familiarity. I, I do like the Seattle coaching staff, but, man, this rush defense is just atrocious, and they have everybody back for the Niners. So whether they cover this is 100% going to be on the – on the back of Geno Smith, if they can stay within the 10. Like, if this goes over, it's going to be, it's, again, I, I made the comparison to the Georgia game. It's not going to be a 50 point win, but, you know, that, that total almost came down to TCU. Are you going to contribute or what are we doing here? And I feel like if it does go over, it's because of Saddles offense. San Francisco just kind of gets theirs by having at least half of their drives are going to be, you know, into go into field goal territory at a minimum if they're successful in the red zone and like you mentioned it's not a great matchup red zone wise for seattle as well as with all the things shanahan can do with all these pieces i haven't even mentioned Ayuk, kittle use check like I've, I've missed a big chunk of their offense at this point so it feels like they're just overmatched on both sides of the ball and i mean that's why we have a 10 point spread in a playoff game such is life. I don't think Seattle was <laughs> – I think Seattle was very lucky to win that game. Um, there was some – I don't ever want to be the ref, ref rigged, all this sort of stuff guy, but the refing was a little rough for the Rams, and basically they just – they didn't get it done in the red zone either. Like the Rams had every chance to win that game and knock them out of the playoffs. So I don't I don't traditionally do teasers that aren't completely in like a, a Wong area, but this isn't the worst one either. I've seen a couple people mention that, like, taking San Francisco down to four or three like that. That's not a bad look. I, I likely won't have any action on this pregame, but it, it does just feel like, and again, it, it's one of those things where I think you'll kind of feel the ball rolling one way or the other, either the Seattle offense shows up and is able to try to keep this close or they don't. And every time the Niners have the ball, they have the ball for a while because it's just a ton of, Third and short against a bad run defense. How, how often do you pick those up with Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Elijah Mitchell in the backfield? Like all those third and shorts are almost just gimmies against this team. So just keeping the ball out of the Seattle Seahawks hands feels like such an easy task for this team at this point. And then on the other side, their defense is very good. So it feels like the line's probably pretty close to where it needs to be for a, a third time matchup here. And yeah, no action, but I do kind of, I do kind of like the teaser. I'm, uh, and then, you know, you did mention you like the under a bit. 
I almost wonder if it is just like a Seattle Seahawks team total under you can look at as well. If you think that they're just not going to be able to compete against this defense, they're not going to have the ball. There's going to be limited possessions. You know, it might be a spot where they only get eight possessions. If we, uh, if we see the Niners have long sustained drives based on the back of the, the running game. And again, I can't, I can't shit on Purdy. Like I know he hasn't played anyone, but he's done what he's asked. He hasn't winced it where he goes out there and just loses the game for the team because he's young and inexperienced. It's, I mean, he's a four-year starter, played in bowl games every year. He played a lot of college football. He's like the anti-Trubisky. I think I played a ton in college. And um, it's funny, too. Like somebody, somebody pulled up the odds for Super Bowl MVP and Purdy was listed kind of not too far down either. And he tweeted, he said, if you saw this before the season, you'd have to Google which team Purdy was on. And I'm like, a hundred percent, I would have. I would not have known who'd taken him. Like, there's no chance I would have realized who'd taken him. All the talk in Niners camp was Trey Lance, of course. So, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna bet this one, but I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch the Niners kind of trounce. I think they're my, but I, I ran my numbers. The way the Eagles injuries have gone. My Niners, the Niners are my NFC favorites. I love hearing that. Um, I have Niners from the beginning of the year to win the Super Bowl at 15 to 1, and NFC at 750 to 1. Or sorry, 7.5 to 1. I already cashed on them to win the NFC West at plus 150. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm very excited. Uh, I, I think that Purdy will have a, a tough, tougher time. I, I really do. I think the running game will control everything. I think. Purdy will focus on keeping everything clean. As we talked about, he's not faced stiff competition yet. And the only team over 500 that he faced were the Seahawks. And they held him down a bit. And not, you know, not enough to get a W, but they held him down. And now they're facing him again. So I think we're going to learn a lot about Purdy here, seeing a defense, seeing him a second time. And I'm excited to see what he will do. I do like the under very much there's tasha in the house richie vegas thank you guys all for yeah. that game us. a few weeks ago between these teams was up at lumen that is you know it doesn't matter how good the team is or not that's still a very tough place to play they have a really nice fan base up there in the pacific northwest it's a tough place you know i, I gave him credit but he's still a rookie quarterback it's not an easy game to go play. They got that done. And yeah like as anyone can look at the Geno game logs the turnovers have gotten a little a little heavier over the past, I don't know, six, seven weeks. He had a couple games where he had two picks a piece. He hadn't done that during the first part of the season. It was like one, none, one, none. And he had at least two games later in the year where he had two picks. So if uh, yeah, if Seattle turns the ball over multiple times, loses that turnover battle like 2 nil, this is going to be – this could just be a, a route, which isn't fun because you don't want uh, – and I guess maybe you do. If you bet Niners minus 10, you want to see it 35 nothing and a half. You do. You do. And uh, I wouldn't fault anybody uh, on moving on the Niners. I honestly think if I had, you know, a free bet, I probably on the side, I probably move on the Seahawks to, to stay within 10. Uh, I, you know, but uh, in saying that, uh, I like the under 43. I like the matchup for the Niners. I think this should be a comfortable victory and get to move on here. Uh, Mike, how, how are you? Are you going to be live betting this one? Are you going to be doing any shows with the playoff games? Yes. Uh, so we're going to keep this week. We're keeping the same schedule Sunday night and Monday night. And we are doing our first ever NFL pub hub uh, playoff pub hub. I should say oh. our first ever NFL playoff pub hub. And that will be two 30 on Saturday. So that will be the two hours leading up to this football game right here. Two 30 Eastern on Saturday here on Pub Sports Radio. So, yeah, the so the main ones that we'll be live betting are the Bengals, Ravens, and then, of course, the Buccaneers, Cowboys. So I, I think I had a good kind of closing thoughts. I agree with you, too. If you made me bet a side, 10 points is an awful lot. You're starting to see some steam in the market that's pushing it down to 9.5 in a few places. The market agrees. And again, it, it's it is one of those things where I think I'll live bet this one. You can you kind of get a feel to how this game's going. And again, keep comparing it to the national title game. But man, people, people the other night were like, it's a second half team. There's a whole half of football left. And it just felt like anybody who was taking TCU numbers at that point, like, I don't think a whole half of football is good for you. 
You want this game to be over if you have a TCU number. Like anytime Georgia touches the ball, it's horrible for you at this point. If you have a, a big plus money live bet it, then obviously that's kind of what came to fruition. And and this game shifting that way where just Seattle's three and outing and San Francisco has long sustained drives where they're getting down into the red zone every single time doesn't feel out of the realm of possibilities. This could be a this could be kind of a bad game if it ends up going that way. Mike M will close with his stats. Dog 16 and 8 against the spread over the fat past five postseasons in wild card action. 16 and 8 against the spread. Also facing a team who missed the postseason the previous year, 10 and 1 against the spread. Thank you for sharing that with us, Mike. That is Seahawks 49ers.